Take a deep breath. Now focus. What if you could see the future? What if healthcare reform had unintended consequences on pharmaceutical marketing and other healthcare communications? What if in this future there are no pharmaceutical sales representatives? And no DTC. In this future, Abe, the beaver, and that weird guy in the diver suit have quite literally missed the train. <laughs> on that train are patients, doctors, insurers, government regulators, hospital administrators, and other healthcare stakeholders. What Abe and his friends don't realize is that the train doesn't stop at this junction anymore. So it seems that they'll be waiting a very long time. And finally, what if some of our newer friends had also disappeared, like our loyal and trustworthy confidant, branded Paid Search, who for so many years gave people exactly what they were looking for. What if one day branded paid search fell silent and then disappeared? And what if there was a company that had already embraced this future? Parenthetically, it was Joe's idea to do the dramatic uh, read-through in the back of the room. <laughs> uh. Hi. I'm Joe Shields from Pfizer, uh, formerly Wyeth. Uh, this is Kevin Nolte, also known as Nolts, both in the real world and on YouTube. Uh, we'd like to go through a uh, quick social media case study for you to show kind of uh, what some smaller companies are doing in this space. We obviously talk a lot about the big guys like Johnson & Johnson, uh, Sanofi Aventis, and, and places like that. Uh, but we see a lot of innovation uh, in the smaller spaces. And actually, Kevin, uh, who got his MBA at Babson, knows a professor who knows a guy who knows a guy who actually gave us this case study. So we're going to go through that, and then we'll get into some uh, three major themes that you'll see later on. How many of you have heard of uh, Alpha Munex? By show of hands. Anyone? OK, so this is a company based in uh, St. Louis, near St. Louis, um, that is a relatively young company, and therefore has been able to embrace social media in ways that most of us haven't in large pharma or biologics. Okay, and uh, their uh, board of directors has some notables from, uh, from Microsoft and Apple and some other Silicon Valley, so they're obviously a little more progressive, not only in the ranks, but also from the top. Uh, they have a, an office of social media. As you can see over there, obviously this is oversimplified. Uh, we actually just pulled this from uh, Kevin's professor, didn't really do a, a lot of extra work, but you know, the office of social media reports directly into the CEO. Uh, Kevin was responsible for actually this part of the presentation, so. I, can't vouch for its quality or completeness. Uh, but as you see there, you know, they, they take social media extremely seriously. It's an integrated function. Uh, obviously, you can see the note there that the professor put it oversees marketing, PR, customer insights, uh, information technology, and all customer service functions. Can anyone say that about our current company, where social media is given that type of visibility? So it's pretty progressive. The, uh, the interesting thing, too, is that this company not only monitors social media, but pushes it out through its entire workforce. Um, Joe, you want to talk about some of the tools they use? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, this is illustrative. They wouldn't give us the, the real deal. But they are collaborating not only with their uh, partners and the people in the supply chain, but also their stakeholders, CROs, and, and places like that. Uh, obviously, these are closed systems. Uh, we you know, put the slide together to be a little more illustrative. Uh, and then Kevin actually did the next slide. This, too, is illustrative. But the point here is that they've got their eye on social media. And uh, they've got a room where uh, executives can sit to monitor constantly what's being said about their therapeutic area and their brands. And that information is disseminated through some of these tools to people that aren't sitting in the war room 24-7. They have headsets, right? Pardon? They have headsets, right? They have headsets. Like Madonna? And monitors. And yeah. there's actually a national map with glows. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. OK, also in everyone's office in this company, there's a red phone that, when you pick it up, actually goes right to the FDA. So if they have any questions at all about you know, social media, internet marketing, you know, print ads, whatever they want, they just pick it up. Somebody graciously answers it at the FDA, answers their question, and, and they kind of go on with their merry way. So it's a very efficient company. There's very little waste. They don't have to second guess uh, because they didn't know any better. So they, they started, you know, big pharma companies assume you can't talk directly to the FDA. So um, they just went ahead and did it. So why haven't you heard of this company? 
It, no, it doesn't exist. I made it up. So. Wait, wait a minute. This was, <laughs> this was your part. You told me to look for a case study in pharma where it was being done right, and I was going well, go to Wyeth. It doesn't even exist anymore. So. Cool. Nice one. So okay, so let's, uh, after the two fake openings, uh, we decided to do a real opening, which is really about uh, how, do, how do we deal with this thing in a, in a more of a practical way. Obviously, we can all wring our hands. Uh, a lot of excitement about the hearings uh, next week in Washington. Uh, but I don't expect, you know, a big fundamental change. Obviously, a lot of change is incremental. It's more of a process as opposed to a single event. So we're going to touch on some key themes here, um, three in all. Uh, it's actually in the, in the agenda. Uh, we're going to go at fairly rapid pace. Uh, we'll be around at the break for questions, uh, should you have any. Uh, the first one is currency shift. So people who are important, how did they get that way? In the medical community, it tends to be physicians who do clinical trials, physicians who publish, um, maybe some other notables, uh, Ralph Nader, consumer advocates. Uh, but the world is changing. So who's got the currency now in pharma? We've spent a lot of time looking at uh, KOLs, and we like to use the term, you know, patient, KOLs. But there is a currency shift on influence that is profound and is happening right now. And it could be seen in other industries, and it's going to happen in pharma. And uh, I use the analogy of the transformation of media, where you go back to the days of vaudeville and radio and television. At each stage of the evolution, something interesting happened. And that is that new stars were created with each new medium. And so if you take as an example Charlie Chaplin, who was he before film? Um, similarly, Nathan Lane, right? Brilliant uh, on the Broadway stage, fills up auditoriums, has had three failed sitcoms. Julia Roberts is loved by the camera but cannot fill a show on Broadway. So each star has potential value to, potential, to different new mediums. And um, I like the example now of Fred and Oprah. How many people have heard of Fred? Okay, he's, this is, uh, always amazes me. There are only a few people here that have heard of Fred. Fred is bigger than Oprah um, in online video. He's, he's got the, uh, one of the largest followings. He's appeared on television. Is, is this just with your YouTube friends? Or this, this is, is not just people? among my YouTube nerds. This, we're talking 65 times the presence that Oprah has. Okay, so Oprah, queen of media, when it comes to online video, is paled by Fred, who none of you have heard of. So let's change that today.